Hey guys, Shabbat Shalom. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray, you guys. <clears throat> Yahuwah, thank you for gathering us here today. Please send your Ruach upon this study and guide us through it. All your ways are so good, Abba. They are purifying for the soul. I pray you send my brothers and sisters discernment, that they may rightly divide your truth. And I pray those who are still slumbering awaken to your word. And we humble our hearts before you, Yahuwah. In Yahushua's name we pray. Amen. All right, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Torah Truth Fellowship of Yahusha. I am your host, Brianna, and this is the Torah portion. Um, so last week we covered Genesis chapters 27 through 29, and this week we'll be going over chapters 30 through 32. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. If you have your Bible handy, now is the time to go ahead and get it out and open it up. Um, we are going to be beginning on Genesis chapter 30. Let's go ahead and read that. <clears throat> All right, I'll give you guys just a second because I already have my Bible open and ready. So I'll give you guys just a second to open up your Bibles if you want and follow along. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and begin because I got some rain clouds moving my way. I got to hurry up. All right, chapter 30, Genesis chapter 30. And when Rachel saw that she bore Yaakov no children, Rachel envied her sister, and said unto El Yaakov, Give me children, or else I die. And Yaakov's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in Elohim's stead? Who has withheld for who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my maid Bela, go in unto her, and she so, she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bela, her handmaid, to be his woman. And Yaakov went in unto her. And Bela conceived and bore Yaakov a son. And Rachel said, Elohim has judged me, and has also heard my voice, and has given me a son. Therefore called she, called she his name Dan. And Bela, Rachel's maid, conceived again, and bore Yaakov a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestling have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. And if you notice, when the women have sons in the Bible, they always have something to say before their sons are born. Like, why they're naming their sons what they're naming them. Like, with Naphtali, she's, Rachel said, With great wrestling have I wrestled with my sister sister and I have prevailed. My sister had all these sons bore unto her and I had none. And Yahuwah has heard me and now I have prevailed. I have sons. Um, all right. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her to Yaakov to be his woman. And Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, bore Yaakov a son. And Leah said, a troop comes. And she called his name God. And Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, bore Yaakov a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother, Eliah. Then Rachel said unto Eliah, Give me, I pray you, of your son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that you have taken my man? And would you take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. And Yaakov came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in unto me, for surely I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And Elohim hearkened unto Eliah, and she conceived and bore Yaakov a fifth son. And Leah said, Elohim has given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my man. And she called his name Ishakar. And Leah conceived again and bore Yaakov a sixth, the sixth son. And Leah said, Elohim has endued me with a good dowry. Now will my man dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zuvalin. And afterwards she bore a daughter and called her name Dina. And Elohim remembered Rachel, and Elohim hearkened to her, and opened her womb, and she conceived, and bore a son, and said, Elohim has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Yosef, and, ya and said, Yahuwah shall add to me another son. And it came to pass, when Rachel born Yosef, that Yaakov said unto Levan, Send me away, that I may go to my, unto my own place, and to my country, and give me my women and my children, for whom I have served you, and let me go. For you know my service, which I have done you. And Levan said unto him, I pray you, if I have found favor in your eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that Yahuwah has blessed me for your sake. And he said, Appoint me your wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, 
You know how I have served you, and how your cattle were with me. For it was a little which you had before I came, and now it is increased unto a multitude. And Yahuwah has blessed you since my coming. And now when I shall provide now when I shall provide for my own house also. And he said, What shall I give you? And Yaakov said, You shall not give me anything if you will do this thing for me, and I will again feed and guard your flock. I will pass through all your flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and all the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in the time to come. When when it shall come for my hire before your face, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Levan said, Behold, I would it might be according to your word. And he removed that day the he-goats that were ring-staked and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hands of his sons. And he sat three days' journey betwixt himself and Yaakov, and Yaakov fed the rest of Levan's flocks. And Yaakov took him rods of green poplar and, the, and of the hazel and chestnut tree, and peeled white strakes in them. And he made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had piled before the flocks in the gutters of the watering troughs, when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods, and brought forth cattle, ring strakes, speckled and spotted. And Yaakov did separate the lambs, and set the faces of the flocks towards the ring strake, and in all the brown in the flock of Levan. And he put his own flocks by themselves, and put them not unto Levan's cattle. And it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Yaakov laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. And when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Levan's, and the stronger Yaakov's. And the man increased exceedingly. And had many cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. All right, let's stop. Let's talk about this really quick. Okay. So we see that Rachel is barren, and it really made her envy her sister um, Leah. So she says to Jacob, "Give me children, or I'm gonna die." And Jacob says to her, am I not in Yahuwah's good graces? Who has withheld you from bearing children? And the answer is herself. It was Rachel. Rachel was barren because of her jealousy. First, Yahuwah closed her womb because he saw that Jacob loved Rachel and hated Leah. And then Rachel began to grow jealous of her sister, which in turn kept her womb closed. It wasn't until Rachel repented of that that Yahuwah opened her womb back up. So anyways, Rachel gives Jacob her handmaid um, and says, uh, here, we're going to have children through my handmaid. So Jacob and Bela, Rachel's handmaid, conceived, and she bore a son who they named Dan. And then Bela conceived and bore Jacob and Rachel a second son who they named Naphtali. And when Leah saw this, since her childbearing days were over, she also gave Jacob her handmaid, um, Zilpah. And she conceived and bore Jacob a son, and they named him God. And then Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, conceived and bore another son, and they named him Asher. And then one day, Reuben, Leah's son, was gathering mandrakes in the field when Rachel says to her sister, Please, I pray you, give me some of your son's mandrakes. To which Leah responds, You already took my husband. You want to take my son's mandrakes now too? And Rachel said, Well, Jacob will lie with you tonight for those mandrakes. And later that night, Leah meets Jacob out in the field, um, with the man with the mandrakes and asked Jacob to lie with her and then Leah conceived and she bore Jacob another son and they named him Ishakar and then Leah conceived again and she bore another son and they named him Zuvalin and then she conceived one last time and she bore a daughter and they named her Dina and then Rachel conceived and had another son um they named him Joseph and after Rachel had Joseph uh, Jacob went to his father-in-law, Levon, and he asked Levon to let him and his family leave. So Levon said, you know, tell me your wages, and, you know, I really want you to stay here and, uh, you know, serve me, because I've noticed since you came that Yahweh has blessed me, you know, tell me your wages, what can I do to get you to stay here? And, uh, where was I? So... Jacob tells him, you know, you know how long I have served you and tended to your cattle. You had only a little when I came here, and now you have a multitude. Yahuwah has blessed you since I have came here, and now I must go and provide for my own house. Levon says, well, what shall I give you? And Jacob said, nothing, if you do this one thing for me, and I will again feed and guard your flock. 
And he said, I will pass through the flocks, removing all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the speckled among the goats, and that will be my wages. And Jacob tells him, My righteousness will answer for me, and I will be accused of stealing these cattle. And Levon says, I'll do, I'll do according to your word. So Levon gathered all the ringed straight cattle, and all the spotted and speckled cattle, and everyone that had some white in it, and all the brown sheep, and he gave them to his sons. And then he set three days' journey between himself and Jacob. And while Jacob tended to the rest of Levon's flock, while Jacob t- tended to the rest of Levon's flocks. And really quick, I want to read something found in the book of Jasher. It is in Jasher 31, lines 35 through 39. Let's look at this really quick. All right, here we are. It says, Jasher 31, lines 35 through 39 says, And in the course of time, he had heard the words of Levon's son, saying, Yaakov has taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's, he has acquired all this glory. And Yaakov beheld the countenance of Levon and his children. And behold, it was not toward him in those days, as, as it had been before. And Yahweh appeared to Yaakov at the expiration of six years, and said unto him, Arise, and go forth out of this land, and return unto the land of your birthplace, and I will be with you. And Yaakov rose up at that time, and he mounted his children and women, and all belonging to him upon the camels, and he went forth to go to the land of Canaan, to his father Yitzhak. And Levon did not know that Yaakov had gone from him, for Levon had been shearing, that day shearing the sheep. Uh, hold on guys, my phone is acting ridiculous again. <sighs> Satan. I have to restart it, so hold on guys, bear with me. Oh yes, we need to hurry up, those clouds look bad. We have had so much rain lately. I don't know about any of you guys, where any of you are, but I'm here in South Carolina and we have just, we've got rain like every day. Like it's rained so much, the ground hasn't even had a chance to dry. Like the ground is, my, my yard is like a swamp. It's crazy. more than one second. Ah. Oh, it's hot. So hot. Alright. Hold on, guys. Almost ready. Takes this phone a minute to start up. It's kind of old. Okay. Here we go. Let me pull this back up. Alright. All right, so then we see Jacob makes these rods out of um, poplar and hazel and um, chestnut tree, and he sets them up so when the cattle come to drink, they conceive and they multiply. And he does this by Yahuwah. Yahuwah is the one doing this with his marvelous wonders. And um, all the cattle that Levon had made off with appeared before Jacob by these cattle conceiving through this rod and multiplying. So then Jacob um, separates the cattle. He took the cattle of Levon's flocks that he was tending to, and he separated them from the cattle that were just conceived and born of Levon's cattle. And Jacob bred the stronger cattle, and he didn't let any of the weaker sick cattle breed. The feeble and sick cattle, those belonged to Levon, and the stronger cattle were Jacob's. And Jacob's cattle increased exceedingly, and he also had many maidservants and manservants and camels and asses. All right, chapter 31, let's go ahead and read. Oh, I should have tied my hair up. And he heard the words of Levon's son, saying, Yaakov has taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was of our father's he has gotten all the glory. And Yaakov beheld the countenance of Levon, and behold, it was not toward him as before. Didn't we just read this? In Jasher? <clears throat> and Yahuwah said unto El Yaakov, 
return unto the land of your fathers and to your kindred, and I will be with you. And Yaakov sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and he said to them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the Elohim of my father has been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father, and your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But Elohim suffered him to not hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled cattle shall be your wages, then all the cattle bore speckled. And if he said thus, the ring strike cattle shall be your hire, then bore all the cattle ring strike. Thus says Elohim, has taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at that time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring strikes, speckled and grizzled. And the angel of Elohim spoke unto me in a dream, saying, Yaakov. And I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now your eyes, and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring strikes, speckled and grizzled. For I have seen all that Levon does unto you. I am the Elohim of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar, and where you vowed a vow unto me. Now arise, get you out from this land, and return unto the land of your kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered to him, and said unto him, is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he has sold us and quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which Elohim has taken from our father, that is, uh, that is ours and our children's. Now then, whatsoever Elohim has said unto you, do. <clears throat> so, and Yaakov rose up and set his sons and his women upon camels, and he carried away his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, and the cattle of his getting which he had gotten in Padan Aram, for to go unto El Yitzik his father in the land of Canaan. And Levon went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the teraphim that were her father's, and Yaakov stole away the unawares to Levon the Arame, and that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up, and he passed over the river, and he set his face towards Mount Gilad. And it was told unto Levon the third day that Yaakov was fled, and he took his brethren with him, and pursued him seven days' journey. And they overtook him in the Mount Gilad. And Elohim came to Levon the Arame in the dream by night, and said unto him, Take heed that you speak not to Yaakov, either good or bad. Now then Levon overtook Yaakov. Now Yaakov had pitched his tent in the mount, and Levon with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilad. And Levon said to Yaakov, What have you done, that you have stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captives, taken with the sword? Wherefore did you flee away secretly, and steal away from me, and did not tell me that I might have sent you away with mirth, and with songs, and with tabre, and harp? And have not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters. You have now done foolishly in doing so. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the Elohim of your father spoke unto me yesternight, saying, Take heed that you speak not to Yaakov, either good or bad. And now, though you would need to be gone, because you soar long after your father's house, yet wherefore you have stolen my Elohim. And Yaakov answered and said to Levon, Because I was afraid, for I said, Perchance you would take before, by force your daughters from me. With whomsoever you find your Elohim, let him not live. Before our brethren, discern what is yours with me, and take it to you. For Yaakov knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Levon went into Yaakov's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the two maidservants' tent. And he found them not. And then he went out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. And now Rachel had taken the teraphim, and put them in the camel's furniture, and sat upon them. And Levon searched all the tent, but he found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my Adonai, that I cannot rise up before you, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the teraphim. And Yaakov was wroth and choked with Levon. And Yaakov answered and said to Levon, What is my transgression? What is my sin that you have so hotly pursued after me? Whereas you have searched all my stuff, and you have found all of your house, what have you found of all your household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and your brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. These twenty years I have been with you. Your ewes and your goat have not cast their young, and the rams of your flock have I not eaten. That which was torn with beasts I brought not unto you. I bore the loss of it, and of my hand did you require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was in the day... Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Thus I have been twenty years in your house. I have served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six years for your cattle, and you have changed my wages ten times, except the Elohim of my father, the Elohim of Abraham, and the fear of Yitzhak had been with me. Surely you had sent me away now empty. Elohim has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked you yesterday. And Levan answered and said unto El Yaakov, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that you see is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto the, their children which they have borne? Now therefore come, let us cut a covenant, I and you. Let it be for a witness between me and you. And Yaakov took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Yaakov said unto his brethren, Gather stones, and they take stones and made a heap. And they did eat there upon the heap. And Levon called it Yeger Sahu. 
Saha Dutha. But Yaakov called it Galid. Hold on. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and you this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid. And Mitzpah, for he said, for he said, Yahweh will watch between me and you, and when we are absent from one another. If you shall afflict my daughters, or if you shall take other women beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, Elohim is a witness between me, betwixt me and you. And Laban said to Yaakov, Behold, this heap and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt me and you. This heap be witness, and this pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to you, and that you shall not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. And the Elohai of Abraham, and the Elohai of Nahor, the Elohai of their father, judge betwixt us. And Yaakov swore seven oaths by the fear of his father Yitzhak. Then Yaakov offered sacrifice upon the mount, and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread, and tarried all night on the mount. And early in the morning, Levan rose up, and kissed his sons and daughters, and blessed them. And Levan departed, and returned unto his place. Okay, let's go ahead and read about this. We'll discuss this. So, Jacob heard what Levon's sons were saying about him. So, he told his wives, and he said, you know, we have to go. Your father's countenance isn't towards me anymore, but Elohim has been with me, and he's protected me from harm. Your father has deceived me, and he's changed my wages ten times. Since he took the ring straight and speckled cattle for me, which was supposed to be my wages, Yahuwah provided for me the cattle provided for me, and the cattle bore speckled and ring straight cattle. And Yahweh has taken away the cattle of your father, and he's given them to me. And he tells them, he tells them, he tells me about it in a dream, he tells them about it in a dream that he had of this happening. And the angel of Yahuwah spoke to him, telling him what he was going to do with the cattle. And the angel said, I have seen what Levon does to you. And then Rachel and Leah both say, well, where is our portion and our inheritance, you know, from our father? Um, he sold us, and he spent all of our money. And they said, um, what Yahuwah has taken from our father is now ours and our children's. And whatever Yahuwah told you to do, you go do it. So Jacob uh, set his women on camels and all his goods. And he headed for the land of Canaan to see his father Isaac. And Rachel had stolen a teraphim of her father's. A teraphim is a statue of an idol, a false god. Um, and Jacob was unaware of this. And on the third day, Jacob and his family had left. It was told to Levon they had departed. So Levon and all his brethren pursued Jacob, a seven-day journey. And then um, Yahuwah came to Levon in a dream, and he told him that you don't speak to Jacob, either good or bad. But Levon pursued Jacob anyways and encompassed him. And Levon said, what have you done? You took my people without word, and you took my daughters, and you carried them away captive. You fled in secret, and you stole from me. And didn't Jacob say in chapter 30 that he would be accused of stealing when he left? You didn't tell me that I may have sent you away with gifts. You didn't even suffer me to kiss my sons and daughters goodbye. You have dealt foolishly with me. And it is in my power to hurt you. But Yahuwah, the Elohim of your father, told me not to speak to you, good or bad. And now that you're gone, my teraphim has gone missing. Why did you steal my Elohim? And Jacob said, I fled in secret because I was afraid. But whoever took your Elohim, let him not live. Um, discern what is yours and take it. Um, so Levon goes into Jacob's tent and Leah's tent and Rachel's tent. And Rachel had hidden the teraphim with the camel's furniture and she was sitting upon it. And she said to her father, don't be dismayed, but I cannot rise up because the custom of women is upon me. So he didn't search where she was sitting. Um, and Jacob, he was very upset at this point with Levon. Um, and Jacob, he said, what have I done? What is my transgression? Um, you have searched all of my stuff and you didn't find anything. And he said it there before, he said, set it there before my brethren, whatever you have found, and your brethren and my brethren, let them judge between us. Um, he said, 20 years I have been with you, and your ewes and goats have multiplied, and have not been eaten by beasts, and that would ditch that which did get torn by beasts, I didn't bring to you for eating. I served 20 years in your house and 14 for your daughters, and you changed my wages 10 times, except that Elohim is with me, the Elohai of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and he has been with me because you surely sent me away empty. Yahuwah has seen my affliction and labor, and he rebuked you last night. So Levon said, these are my daughters, and these children are mine, and these cattle are mine. And he said, let us cut a covenant with each other, and let it be a witness. So Jacob set a stone in a pillar, and they ate upon it. And Levon said, this heap of stones is a witness between me and you. And therefore they called it Galib, or Mitzpah. 
and Yahuwah watch between me and you. Do not afflict my daughters or take other women. The Yahuwah is a witness between us. And he said, from this day forward, I will not pass this pillar and come into your land to harm you. And you do not pass this pillar and come into my land to harm me. And the Elohai of Abraham and the Elohai of Nahor and the Elohai of their father judge betwixt us. Um, and Jacob swore seven oaths by his father Isaac. And Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain. And they also ate bread and tarried on the mountain all night. And then early the next morning, Levon rose and he kissed his sons and daughters goodbye. And then he went back to Haram. All right, finally, chapter 32. Let's go ahead and read this because I am dying out here, guys. It's so hot. This one's a short one. And Yaakov went on his way, and the angels of Elohim met him. And when Yaakov saw them, he said, This is Elohim's host. And he said the name of that place is Makanim. And Yaakov sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my Adonai Esau. Your servant Yaakov says thus, I have sojourned with Levon, and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and asses, flocks and manservants, and women servants, And I have sent to tell my Adonai that I might find grace in your sight. And the messengers returned to El Yaakov, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and also he comes to meet you, and four hundred men with him. Then Yaakov was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him, and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two bands. And he said, If Esau come to one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Yaakov said, O Elohai of my father Abraham, and the Elohai of my father Yitzhak, Yahuwah, which said unto me, Return unto your country, and to your kindred, and I will deal well with you. Am I, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies, and of all the truth which you have showed unto your servant. <clears throat> For with my staff I passed over this yard, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray you, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him, lest he will come and smite me, and, my, and the mother with the children. And you said, I will surely do you good. And make your seed as the sand of the sea, which could not be numbered for a multitude. And he lodged there that same night, and took that which came unto his hand, a present for Esau his brother. Two hundred she-goats, and twenty he-goats, two hundred ewes, and twenty rams, thirty milk camels, and their colts, forty kine, and ten bulls, twenty she-asses, and ten foals. And he delivered them into the hand of his servants, every drove by themselves, and said unto his servants, Pass over before me, and put a space between drove and drove. And he commanded the foremost, saying, when Esau, my brother, meets you ask, and asks you, saying, Whose are you, and where go you, and whose are these before you? Then you shall say, They be your servant, Yaakov's. It is a present sent unto my Adonai, Esau. And behold, also is he behind us. And so commanded he the second, and the third, and all that followed the droves, saying, On this manner shall ye speak unto Esau, and when ye find him, and, yet, and say ye moreover, Behold, your servant Yaakov is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me, and afterward I will see his face. Perchance he will, he will accept of me. So went the present before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. And he rose up that night, and took his two women, and his two women servants, and his eleven sons, and passed over the ford Yabak. And he took them, and sent them over the brook, and sent them over that he had. And Yaakov was left alone, and there he wrestled with the man, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of ya Yaakov's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said unto him, What is your name? And he said, Yaakov. And he said, Your name shall no be no more called ya Ugh. Your name shall be no more called no more oh jeez <laughs> your name shall be called no more Yaakov <laughs> but Yasharel for as a prince you have power with Elohim and with men have prevailed and Yaakov asked him and said tell me I pray you your name and he said wherefore is it that you do ask for my after my name and he blessed him there and Yaakov called the name of the place Penu Penuel for I have seen Elohim face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his side. And therefore the children of Yasharel eat not the sinew, which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Yaakov's thigh in the sinew that shrank. All right. Let's go ahead and go over this last one. Okay, chapter 32. So Jacob was on his way, and Yahuwah's um, angel met him. And they said that this is Elohim's host, and they called the name of that place Makanim. 
And Jacob sent messengers um, before him to his brother Esau into the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And they said, your servant Jacob, I said, your servant Jacob has sojourned with Laban and stayed with him until now. And he, and now he has um, oxen and asses and flocks and men servants and women servants. And um, I have sent to tell you that I might find grace in your sight and that he might find grace in your sight. And the messengers were told, returned and told Jacob, your brother Esau comes to meet you um, with 400 men. And Jacob was scared and freaking out. So he divided his people into two groups and he hid them. And he said, if Esau comes to one company and smites them, the other company that's left shall escape. Then Jacob prayed to Yahweh saying, am I not worthy of mercy? I did exactly as you have told me to do. Deliver me, I pray you, from the hand of my brother. I fear he will kill me and the mothers and children. So Jacob and his people stayed in that place overnight. And he decided to give his brother Esau a present. 20 she goats and or 200 she goats 20 he goats 200 ewes and 20 rams and all kinds of cattle and he delivered them into the hands of his servants and Jacob told the servants when my brother Esau meets you and asks who are you and where you're going you say that we are Jacob's servants and this is a present from him to you and behold he is trailing behind us um, so that night Jacob rose up and he took his women and their handmaids and his eleven sons and he took them to the brook of Yabok and he sent them over the brook and then Jacob was left alone and there he wrestled with a man until the break of dawn the angel of Yahuwah, Yahusha and when he saw that he prevailed not against Jacob, he grabbed Jacob's thigh and he popped it out a joint. And he said, let me go before the day breaks. And Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. And he said, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no more be called Jacob, but Yasharel, Israel. For as a prince, you have power with Yahuwah and with men and have prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and Jacob asked him, please tell me, I pray you your name. And the angel said, why do you ask for my name? And he blessed Jacob. And Jacob called the place Penuel. He said, for I have seen Elohim face to face and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him and he limped on his thigh. And therefore the children of Yasharel, the children of Jacob, don't eat the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh to this day, because the angel of Yahweh touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. All right, brothers and sisters, that concludes today's Torah portion. Um, don't forget to check out my group on Facebook and let's go ahead and pray. <clears throat> Yahweh, thank you for allowing me to teach your Torah. And what a blessing it is to teach and talk about your instructions for us. What a blessing it is to learn about what your, our fathers have done before us. And I pray my brothers and sisters meditate in your word. And I pray you send your wisdom and understanding upon them, Abba. I pray they call upon Yahushua HaMashiach and ask for forgiveness and for comfort. And I pray all of your remnant returns and that we are worthy of the blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Yahuwah, and we praise you. In Yahushua's name we pray. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, I will see you again next week. Enjoy the rest of your Shabbat and Shalom.